Right now on 13 Action News Live at 11, a 16 hour long standoff near the strip ends with a deadly police involved shooting. Feeling the heat, residents left sweltering after a fire knocks out the power to an RV park in the valley. But first, one person is dead and another person was taken to the hospital after a single vehicle crash. You're looking at video just into our newsroom of crews towing that vehicle away just about half an hour ago. It happened around 6 o'clock tonight near Tanea Way in Sahara. 13 Action News reporter Austin Carter joining us now live. And Austin, what else can you tell us? Well, Tom, right now the westbound lanes of Sahara are still shut down right now. That vehicle involved has since been cleared out, but I want to show you where that SUV landed on top of that truck you see right there in the parking lot of this Hyundai dealership. Now officers arrived to the scene along Sahara just north of Rainbow to a vehicle versus pedestrian crash just before six o'clock this evening. Metro says that vehicle was heading west on Sahara when for some reason it left the roadway hitting the pedestrian who was also heading west. The vehicle then hit a palm tree and then flip before landing in the parking lot here. Now first responders pronounced that pedestrian dead at the scene. The driver rushed to a nearby hospital. Currently they are in serious condition and Metro says this crash could have been avoided and they're urging drivers and pedestrians to constantly be aware. What we're asking uh, Las Vegas to do is to ensure that um, we take responsibility of our driving. Um, we take responsibility um, for our pedestrians and we just need people to slow down, wear their seatbelts, use crosswalks. And this death marking the 80th traffic related fatality in Las Vegas this year. Reporting live, Austin Carter, 13 Action News. A suspect is dead following a 16 hour long barricade that ended in an officer involved shooting near the stratosphere. 13 Action News reporter Nina Porshinkala tells us how it all started. Well, this has been a very tense and dangerous situation for people in that area. And at one point, even we were told to stay out because we were in the line of fire. And I want to show you this video sent to us by one of our viewers over Facebook, where he was able to capture the moment SWAT officers were able to breach the apartment. Whoa. Police told us this started at around 9.30 Friday night when a woman flagged down an officer saying a man had kidnapped and raped her and then went into an apartment in Baltimore and Fairfield. Police were able to locate the suspect in an apartment and they were talking to him through the door when the suspect fired towards the officers. SWAT and crisis negotiators responded. At around 1.15 this afternoon, they were able to breach the apartment and encounter the suspect, fired multiple rounds, and the suspect was pronounced dead at the scene. They talked to this individual and negotiated with him. They made contact him with, with him numerous times on the phone, but they remained on the scene and attempted several less than lethal factors in attempt to get this individual into custody peacefully. It is still unclear if the suspect and the victim knew each other, but we do know that no officer was injured during this incident. Nina Prashukla 13, Action News. The new at 11 Valley RV Park is left in the dark after a fire cut power to the area, leaving wet residents sweltering in the summer heat. Henderson Fire says some sort of electrical fire knocked out a power grid at the Desert Sands RV Park. That's near Boulder Highway and Sunset. The situation is so bad that the Red Cross has set up a shelter for residents at the nearby Whitney Ranch Community Center. One family says the conditions there are simply unbearable. It is so hot, it gets 110 a day. Okay. I'm dripping in sweat. You know, I can't even take my daughter up to the pool, but I take her up there anyways because it's so hot. I don't need to take our daughter to the hospital for heat exhaustion. Henderson Fire tells us NV Energy will not be able to fully restore power into the park until Monday. Well, right now, a little bit humid in our valley, but hopefully that's set to about to change. 13 First Lord Meteorologist Dan Braun is tracking when we could see the dryness return. Hopefully soon, right, Dan? Oh, it, it's dry now. It's that humidity has gone. It was out of here this morning. It's been a very humidless day here in Las Vegas, which is nice to see, and it's going to remain that way through the next couple of days. Satellite showing you no monsoon storms, but there is something that did move in today. I want you to look at this closely. You can see this is from 2 to 7 o'clock this uh, afternoon. You can see this light color white kind of move in and then fade away around 7 o'clock as soon as it hits that Spring Mountains. Well, that's the sun setting. That is smoke from California. It's not picked up after that sun sets, but it moved into the valley, and you could kind of see it if you walk outside. You can see kind of the lights kind of 
glaring down. That is the little bit of smoke that didn't move in. It could get a little worse too during the overnight hours. We'll have to see what happens, but it will be around widespread smoke in the valley tonight. Right now, look at that temperatures. It was a hot day 110 at McCarran. Right now we have cooled a little bit into the 90s in most areas. A couple areas pushing the upper 80s. Now as we go into the overnight hours, every hour that smoke will be there and temperatures will drop back to the mid 80s. Tomorrow the smoke will go away. Monsoon moisture, it won't be there, but it is coming back. I'll show you when in that seven day forecast. Firefighters battling 17 large wildfires across California are now bracing for stronger windy conditions. That's forcing officials to issue a new round of evacuations near the Mendocino complex fires. The threat is so large now that officials are telling people in those areas to get out immediately. Red flag warnings are in effect for several parts of Northern California, including Redding, where the car fire is still burning out of control. Today, the governor toured that charred area. The state is bringing in more resources too. firefighters from Australia and New Zealand will arrive on Monday. Activists, demonstrators and survivors of gun violence gathered in Fairfax, Virginia this afternoon for the National March on the NRA. ABC's Daria Albinger has more on their fight for gun control. NRA, Outside of the National Rifle Association's Virginia headquarters, Demonstrators calling out the gun lobby for its role in blocking gun control legislation and for its continued defense of unrestricted sales of the AR-15 and similar weapons. United, we will overcome a Russian-funded NRA that puts profit before life, forgets the meaning of well-regulated, and most of all, threatens our democracy. Organizers with a number of demands, including banning high-capacity magazines, the institution of universal background checks, revoking the non-profit status of the NRA, and calling for more research on gun violence and its impact on public health. Among the demonstrators, survivors of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting. 17 students and staff members gunned down there last February. I will never have the kind of fear and anxiety that my daughter did running down the hall at school with an AR-15 at her back. I do not care what the gun lobby thinks of me. We will break that lobby's grip on our legislators and we will win. The NRA also being targeted by New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo. The gun lobby claiming in a lawsuit that it's suffering grave financial harm, saying Cuomo and state regulators made it clear to banks and insurers that it is bad business in New York to do business with the NRA. The lawsuit asking the court to have the Cuomo administration cease its anti-NRA practices. For his part, Cuomo said Friday, the state is filing a motion to dismiss the lawsuit, adding, if I could have put the NRA out of business, I would have done it 20 years ago. Daria Albinger, ABC News, New York. Well, new at 11, just when you think you've seen it all here in Vegas, you may soon see racehorses on the Strip. As strange as that sounds, it's something a British company says is a possibility. A spokesperson with City Racing says Vegas is a location they're considering. The company in talks with city officials about bringing the sport here to the Valley. One of the main goals of bringing horse racing here would be to attract new fans. Well, close to 5,000 students are going back to school this year without vaccinations. That's according to the Las Vegas Review Journal. Parents are allowed to skip the vaccinations for their children as long as they get an exemption from the district. They can cite medical reasons or religious beliefs. The RJ reports close to 5,000 exemptions were made last year because of religion and close to 500 were made for medical reasons. All right, Golden Knights fans, some exciting news. William Wild Bill Carlson has signed a one-year contract extension through the 2018-2019 season. That contract is worth $5.25 million. General Manager George McPhee says Carlson has had a great year with the Knights, and they're excited to have him back for another season. All right, well, Kiki, there's a new warning. Mesquite Police tweeting out this traffic sign. It says, buckle up, Kiki. Warnings about the dangers of the Kiki challenge across social media. Several people have been posting videos to Drake's song In My Feelings, sometimes jumping out of moving cars and dancing on the side. Mesquite police saying obviously that's very dangerous and to always remember that your life is more important than a bunch of likes. Well, just in the nick of time, two police officers saved the life of a little girl. She was choking on food when they stepped in to help. Now the toddler's mother is praising their quick actions. And to rent or to buy, that's the big question many people struggle with, and the answer depends on two big factors. We'll be right back. 
check this out. An amazing rescue all caught on camera. Two Palm Beach Gardens, Florida police officers are being called heroes after they saved the life of a 14 month old girl. You can see her there in this video choking on a chicken nugget. Her mother screaming for help in what looks to be the middle of a mall food court when those two officers approach. I remember feeling somebody approaching me from my side and it he was his presence was like so calm and I was just like, thank God he's here. Wow, and this photo says it all. The little girl whose life was spared, her family and the officers all smiles there. The city honored both officers, praising them for their heroic actions. Well, it's something all of us have questioned at some point in our life. Should I rent or buy a home? ABC's Rebecca Jarvis reports that depends on how long you expect to live there and where you're looking. With home prices at record highs in much of the country, rising mortgage rates, and sweeping changes to the tax law, answering the question, should I rent or buy, has rarely been trickier. You might offer, say, $300,000 for the home, but if somebody else comes in at three twenty, dollars your offer could escalate up to, say, three twenty, dollars Which makes sure that no one else is going to come in and outbid you. It removes some of the risk of, oh, did I overbid? Sales of both existing and newly built homes fell overall in June, as did mortgage applications. A severe shortage of houses for sale has driven up values and priced out many would-be buyers. And experts say if you do want to buy in this market, be prepared for bidding wars. But depending on where you live, it might not make sense to own. Nationwide, if you're going to be in the home two or more years, you should buy, not rent. But it's very city specific. There are some parts of the country, like in New York, where the break even horizon, as we call it, is much longer seven years. Online tools like Zillow and NerdWallet will help you to calculate whether it's smarter to own or rent based on your location. Good advice there. That's Rebecca Jarvis reporting. And if you're trying to sell your home, the biggest piece of advice from experts is not to over remodel, maybe a fresh coat of paint, some improvements in the bathroom, but don't overdo it with a big kitchen overhaul because it's just not necessary in this market. Well, Wells Fargo says hundreds of customers lost their homes because of a computer glitch. The issue came to light in a regulatory filing showing that software mistakenly denied about 625 homeowners mortgage modifications. In about 400 cases, the customers were foreclosed upon. The computer error was fixed in October 2015, but it had been going on since April of 2010. Wells Fargo says it has set aside $8 million to compensate customers who were affected by that mistake. And back here at home, police are looking for a woman who's missing. Take a look there. Giovanna Pereira was last seen on August 2nd around 6 o'clock p.m. near Southern Highlands Parkway in Valley View. Anyone who's seen her is encouraged to call Metro. Well, the president's immigration policy getting some blowback this week. On Friday, a federal judge ruled that the DACA program must be resumed. And in another ruling, a judge deciding the Trump administration is solely responsible for reuniting hundreds of children with their parents, those families separated at the U.S.-Mexico border. With more, here's ABC's Stephanie Ramos. President Trump's immigration policy suffering two legal setbacks this past week. A federal judge ruling that the administration must restore DACA, an Obama-era program offering deportation relief for some 700,000 undocumented immigrants brought to the country as children, known as dreamers. Some people call it dreamers. It's not dreamers. Don't fall into that trap. The White House has 20 days to appeal that decision. The president suggesting he's willing to go all the way to the Supreme Court. Ali Tarabi, a DACA recipient from Iran, has lived in San Diego for 22 years. Having this back and forth where one day uh, we don't know if we're going to have any protections and we're up potentially could get deported or detained to telling us, well, yeah, we'll keep the protections. It's difficult. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's really emotionally difficult. Judge John Bates, a George W. Bush appointee, is the third judge to order that the program be restarted. Bates calling the president's decision to end DACA last September arbitrary and capricious and inadequately explained. In another setback, the White House losing its argument that the ACLU and other charities should carry the burden of reunifying those remaining five 172 children separated from their parents at the southern border. The judge saying it is the sole responsibility of the Trump administration, adding that for each unresolved case, there will be a permanently orphaned child. And that is 100 percent the responsibility of the administration. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, New York. 
President Donald Trump used Twitter to take aim at basketball star LeBron James and CNN anchor Don Lemon. Friday night, Trump tweeted, quote, LeBron James was just interviewed by the dumbest man on television, Don Lemon. He made LeBron look smart, which isn't easy to do. He ended his tweet with, I like Mike, possibly a reference to the ongoing debate over who's the greatest NBA player of all time, James or Michael Jordan. And today, First Lady Melania Trump praised LeBron for his charity work. A spokesman, uh, spokeswoman for Melania said in part, quote, it looks like LeBron James is working to do good things on behalf of our next generation. She was referring to LeBron's new elementary school where he donated millions of dollars to help provide free tuition, uniforms and meals for students. Images from a destructive tornado as it strikes Webster, Massachusetts, leaving homeowners stunned. Surveillance footage capturing the moment of impact, sheets of rain barreling across this parking lot. The twister littered the main street, destroying at least two buildings. Recovery crews worked to clear those downed trees, power lines, and building debris. Now, 13 first alert weather. Badly. That fire grew in the last couple of hours near uh, Reading. The car fire now 145,000 acres, still 41% contained. And that one's not even the largest fire. That other fire we talked about earlier, that one's a little bit larger than that in the same area of California. 77 right now, dew points pretty dry up near Reading. So they're not going to get a handle on that fire, especially if the winds pick it up. Some of the smoke from these California fires in the southern uh, Sierra moved into Las Vegas a few hours ago. If y'all walk outside, you can kind of see that glow around the lights. It looks kind of like maybe the East Coast. Well, it's not moisture. It's actually a little bit of uh, smoke that moved in the city as well. So definitely uh, going to notice that by tomorrow morning. It might actually get a little bit denser as well. 54 days. Raising Cane's now donating to 100 as we did it again today. 5400 bucks to make a wish. Uh, here, your temperatures right now into the 90s. 96 Las Vegas sitting at 93 Anthem, 91 Boulder City, 104 in Laughlin. And as I mentioned, a little bit smoky out there. You can't really see it too bad on the cameras. There's not a lot of it. It's just a little, but it could get a little worse the next few hours. So our air quality is sitting, uh, sitting in that sensitive category because of ozone and smoke. Actually, ozone's a little bit more powerful than the smoke is. We'll see what happens tomorrow as that smoke could be pretty bad in the morning. Won't last long by tomorrow afternoon. It should clear up and we'll have clear skies once again around Las Vegas. Uh, the muggy scale, we're going to be bone dry the next few afternoons. Our dew points dropped over 40 degrees since yesterday. It has really, really dried out. That will be the case over the next couple of days. Excessive heat watch is still in effect Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. As temperatures actually going up even warmer than today, only by a few degrees. Tonight, mid 80s. Tomorrow, pushing 110 in the valley. Allergy counts are not going to be high. They're going to remain low over the next couple of weeks. Probably it's just that time of year. What can bloom? It's too hot. It'll dry as well. Here you go. I mentioned temperatures going up. We're talking 112 Tuesday, Wednesday, overnight lows near the 80s. As of right now, calling for 110s even by the end of the week, but there's some uh, hope that temperatures will drop a little bit more than that. That's maybe around 105 by Thursday, Friday. As some moisture will move back up from Arizona, we'll see how far it gets still a couple days away. All right, thanks, Dan. Well, our 13 Action News Supplies for Success Drive just ended, and we want to thank you for all your generosity. Because of you, teachers and parents at Five Valley Schools will have peace of mind for this upcoming school year. We received everything from pencils, whiteboard markers, and copy paper. And this is really a big deal because teachers usually have to dip into their own pockets to buy some of these supplies, and your donations will go a long way this year. The 13 Connects Supplies for Success is sponsored by Subaru of Las Vegas and America First Credit Union. And if you need a haircut before the school year starts, you're in luck. A local business wants to help. My Salon Suite is offering free haircuts for elementary school students in exchange for school supplies. The event is tomorrow and it runs from 10 to 1. The address is there on your screen. Those supplies will be donated to kids in foster care. Well, next on 13 Action News Live at 11, a new generation spending part of their summer learning how to protect us. The students could be the first line of defense when it comes to future cybersecurity threats. And don't forget to download KTNV Mobile. It's in the App Store and Google Play. It's free unless you watch 13 Action News video anywhere you have mobile service. We'll be right back. Well, when you think of summer camp, you might think of canoes and cooking s'mores, but how about a place to train what could be our next wave of cyber defenders? Chris Welch takes us there. There's a visual of a floppy disk, so click on it, see what it does. These students are part of a generation that wouldn't even know what a floppy disk was 
were it not for a school project. Well, I did this project in fourth grade about the 80s. It was like a time back in time project. But it's this generation that will protect us from future cybersecurity threats. The Linux that we're going to use is Ubuntu. It's a week long cyber camp taking place in classrooms nationwide this summer. It's sponsored by the U.S. Air Force Association's Cyber Patriot Program. They'll cover a range of cyber topics. Stuff like hacking and engineering. And Although the H word, a verboten word, yes, is off limits for instructor Randy Mills. The word hacker in the internet field has become so uh, laden with uh, negative connotations that people become panicked when they see that. So we would rather view it as we are teaching defensive skills rather than offensive skills. Hmm, still not working. It's about safeguarding devices, computers, even phones. Security firm Northrop Grumman sponsors hundreds of these camps around the world. You know, cyber can be kind of intimidating. So I think a program like this is so valuable because children are going home and reprogramming their router at their house and making sure that things are a little more safe on their home network. This group just finished up a lesson on how to create more secure passwords. It can be solved in about like 30 seconds if you only have numbers. So you have to use uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers and symbols like apostrophes and stuff like that. But back to the floppy disk. I just don't know what it is still. It's <laughs> like a floppy disk. Well, that's okay, because in here, he won't need one. I'm Chris Welch reporting. Floppy disk, that's a throwback for sure. All right, well, the latest Mission Impossible installment is hot at the box office right now, and now the crew is shedding light on how the star did his own stunts, including the jump from a plane at 25,000 feet. All right, well, who's making news in Tinseltown today? We're talking about Tom Cruise, Jennifer Lopez, and the new and old voice of Eeyore. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Tom Cruise famously jumped from a plane at a reported 25,000 feet for the smash hit Mission Impossible Fallout. But of course, he didn't leap alone. As director Christopher McQuarrie explains, a specially trained cameraman had to jump out in front of Cruise backwards. And the other trick about that is the cameraman can't actually see through the camera. He doesn't, he doesn't know whether he has the frame or not. He doesn't know if it's in focus. Everything is worked out on the ground and then they have to do it in the air, falling at 160 miles an hour, and it's like ballet. Jennifer Lopez is up for two MTV Video Music Awards for De Niro. She's performing on the award show, and now she has an even better reason to attend. J-Lo is receiving this year's Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award. The show airs live from New York on August 20th. If anyone wants to clap, now is the time to do it. Brad Garrett provides the voice of Eeyore in Christopher Robin, and it's not the first time the comedian has played the gloomy donkey. About 25 years ago, I, I voiced Eeyore in a uh, Valentine's Day special for television a long, long, long time ago. It, you know, it's such an iconic character, and I was so honored that it came back around, and, and I'm following the footsteps of some wonderful voice actors. That have, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm accepted as uh, the ass. In the 100 Acre Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, we'll be back with more in a moment. Right now, here's a live look out at the valley. You're watching 13 Action News, where we bring you breaking news fast and first. We'll be right back. Well, looking ahead to tomorrow, local celebrities are coming together to bowl for a good cause. The Out of the Gutter Celebrity Bowling Tournament is benefiting the Nevada SPCA. This is all happening at the Samstown Bowling Center on Boulder Highway. And our very own Las Vegas Morning Blend team will be there. JJ, Micah, and Julie are all putting on their bowling sh shoes. Well, that's 13 Action News Live at 11. We're always on at KTNV.com, our mobile app, and our Roku channel. From all of us here at Channel 13, have a good night, everyone, and have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.